Hey, I'm Sean from ARRI and let's talk 9x16. Alright, I know that this topic is going to attract a lot of controversy and as a you know, proud member of a company with a 100 year old history in cinema, it is a shame that we can't convince people to just rotate their phone 90 degrees. But it's just not the case. It's the hard fact that we have to accept that 9x16 shooting isn't going anywhere. So in this video, I'm going to touch on a couple of different ways that you can shoot for typically social media aspect ratios with the Alexa 35 and the Alexa Mini LF. And I'm also going to talk about the dedicated sets of accessories that we have for both of these cameras, which will allow you to rotate them in the opportunity that you are just shooting for a portrait orientation. And that's kind of important because there are plenty of customers that we know who only shoot in a 9x16 or similar taller aspect ratio. Online fashion retailers are one. People who are shooting content for billboards at shopping centers, which are often portrait, are another. And we do sell cameras to those types of customers and production companies. So that will also be ideal for this. It's not just people shooting TikToks or Instagram Reels, but of course, that is a big part of it too. So before I get started on the accessories, I just wanted to talk about OpenGate. So OpenGate is a sensor format which allows for both widescreen, typically Super 35 widescreen, if we just think about this camera for a minute, and also the taller formats used for anamorphic recording. So that would be a 4x3 or a 6x5 format, which are slightly narrower than the width of Super 35, but are taller. And being able to have both of those types of recording formats on one sensor has resulted in us having a sensor which has an aspect ratio more like 1.5 to 1. So it's kind of squarer than a lot of other cinema cameras which would just have a 16 by 9 sensor. And that means you have more vertical resolution. So both of these cameras have more than 3K resolution vertically. And we know that the iPad Pro 12.9 inch and the iPhone 14 Pro Max, well, they have a screen and the length of the screen is about 2.8K, 2,800 pixels-ish. So you actually already have more resolution in both of these cameras vertically when the camera is in normal orientation than you could display on one of those devices. And we know that the content platforms like TikTok and Instagram Reels, well, they only support HD anyway, of course, portrait, so 1920 high. So many people we already know are just composing for 9x16 and 16x9 at the same time, even though that can be a total compositional nightmare, but it is possible and our cameras are somewhat uniquely you know, propositioned or positioned to be able to support that. And I'd really recommend you go check out the Frameline and Lens Illumination tool on our website because that will allow you to use three different frame lines overlapped with each other. You can reposition them, rescale them. You know, there are lots of terms for this kind of thing. There's the standard Swiss cross kind of format. Personally, I prefer to have uh, the headrooms a little bit closer in 9x16 and 16x9 when I'm shooting those together. But anyway, go check out the Frameline tool. It's then very easy to download those files, put them on the USB stick and load them into your camera, which will then be saved with every clip that you record in both ARRI RAW and ProRes so that it's always in the metadata and you can pull it out with the ARRI reference tool and hand it off to your editor, for example. All right, instead of shooting in an open gate format, you've been allowed some extra time and you can shoot your shots twice. So you need to quickly change between 16x9 and 9x16. Well, these accessories are ideal for that. They've really been designed around quickly changing between orientations, but also I think most importantly, quickly changing between shooting modes. There are many other ways to rig a camera sideways, you know, most commonly with a tripod plate, that's an L plate and you hang the camera sideways. The problem with that is that you then can't really use it in handheld mode or in gimbals or anything like that. And our accessories have really been designed to work with all sorts of different styles of shooting. The other thing to mention with those L plates for tripods is that the viewfinder ends up in a weird position. So in this camera, the viewfinder would be on the off side of the camera. So with our accessories, in both of these instances, the viewfinder is in the proper location on the left-hand side of the camera. And we have this little adapter bracket to flip the viewfinder 90 degrees so it's the same orientation as the camera when it's shooting in portrait mode. 
The other thing I want to mention before we go into more detail is that the side brackets that we have in these cameras in like a traditional landscape orientation, they're not designed to mount the camera to things. So please try and avoid mounting, you know, bridge plates straight onto the side brackets of either of these cameras. There's just not enough grip and you will end up with vibration and it's not ideal. That's why we have specific accessories for these, which a lot of rental houses will already have in their fleet. All right, first off, let's look at the Alexa Mini LF. The Alexa Mini and the Alexa Mini LF work really well in portrait mode because the camera is almost symmetrical top and bottom to side to side. And that means that all we've had to do is introduce four of these little corner pieces here. And then you can take any of the plates which would normally be on the top or the bottom of the camera, like this Map 2 here, add the corner pieces, and then they will mount exactly where the side brackets would go. Now these little corners come in a set. So there is the vertical format adapter set for Alexa Mini. Little box comes with a reusable foam inlay which will drop straight into a Pelican case and you get the four corner adapters plus the viewfinder adapter to rotate the viewfinder 90 degrees. Now there are a couple of different plates that you can mount. So you can use either the Map 1 or the Map 2s to mount on the camera right side side bracket holes and then that becomes the bottom of the camera and if you're using an Alexa Mini or you can use exactly the same ones on the top as well. If you have a Mini LF you just need to also pick up the vertical top plate because the Mini LF has the extra hump for the Codex card bay and the Map 2 will collide with that and also you wouldn't be able to use the user buttons or the record button. So we have this new top plate which allows you to still have rod holes to mount the viewfinder and have access to the card bay and the user buttons. On rods as well, because the camera is so symmetrical, the corner pieces then make the rods that you now have, top and bottom, optically centered, which means that they are the correct height from the center of the lens. So as you can see here with my lovely signature zoom, I have a LS9 lens support at the correct height. Everything works perfectly. And I have a swing away map box as well. The other thing that you can do is use a Bud 2, which you can see I have on the side of the camera here. Now, that is the top half of a compact bridge plate. And in fact, if I take another one of those bridge plates, I can actually slide it in here. But the reason I've put it there is to facilitate a easy swap from horizontal to portrait style shooting. So what it means is that I can just slide the camera out from the compact bridge plate I have down here, rotate the whole lot over, I can slide the viewfinder out and slide that into the map 2 that was on the side and is now back on the top. And then all I have to do is screw in my top handle and I'm ready to go and shoot normally. Now another little thing to mention is battery plates. If you have an Alexa Mini, you can run map 2s where the side brackets would normally be. So they're now your top and the bottom. And then you can run a normal RAB1 in the typical orientation so that your batteries are vertical. In this case, because of the hump with the codex bay, I can't do that, but it is totally fine to run it sideways. And particularly if you have B-mount, so this is a B-mount power splitting box, B-mount battery, because B-mount was designed to be used in all orientations, including upside down, and it's really solid and great. All right, let's look at the Alexa 35. The Alexa 35 works in a little bit of a different way because with this camera body, we put mounting holes for accessories directly into the side of the camera body. On the Mini and the Mini LF, you need to use the mounting holes for side brackets that are actually on the top and bottom plate. Whereas here, I can mount plates directly to the side of the camera. So this is the vertical format base plate and that mounts with the four screw holes for the side bracket here as well as one screw back here which goes into the bud one so that just makes sure that it's very solid and there's no flex in this plate when you have a base plate mounted to it. It's exactly the same dovetail system as at the bottom of the camera normally so if I pull this out this is the CSP2 the compact shoulder pad I can slide that in to what is going to be the base plate there we go vertical format like this. 
Now, of course, you can also use the compact bridge plate or the BPA-6, the bridge plate adapter. But if you're running rods at the bottom of this camera, please note that while they are centered with the lens, they are not the correct height from the center of the lens. And that's just because we needed to leave space at the back of the camera here underneath in order to get all the cables out because you need to have the top of the camera free for your screen here with the menu and the user buttons and all of that. So if you are running a larger zoom, you will just have to add maybe a longer post into the lens support post or use a lens support which has an adjustable screw which you can move it up and down. I would highly recommend checking out the LLS-1. That's the lightweight lens support that we sell which will enable you to use studio zooms on lightweight 15mm rods and there's a huge amount of adjustment available in that lens support because of the two pins that come with it. However, I digress. This is the vertical top plate. So this is a very small plate up here which gives you plenty of room to still get access to all the user buttons, the rec button and the screen with the encoder back here and of course your card bay. Now there are two types of top handles that will work here. You cannot use the CCH5. That's the standard top handle with the production set because that has that unique quick release system which we can't fit into here because there's no room to put the back of the handle back here. So you can use either a CCH2 from the Alexa Mini, which would go here, and lots of PCA part, uh, systems as well. And I would recommend though mounting it backwards so that you have threaded holes at the front available for either an RMB3 or the square accessory sleeve, which will then allow you to use the new viewfinder mounting bracket 5 that you would have in a production set. The other option, of course, is to use the lightweight camera handle, which will also mount to a different set of holes. And this is very easy to mount because of these very large thumb screws. Of course, if you have multiple of these pieces, you can leave them attached and just throw the camera from side to side, which is very handy. The vertical top plate, the vertical format base plate, and the viewfinder adapter for vertical shooting, well, they're all available in the vertical format adapter set for the Alexa 35 which is probably the way I'd recommend that you go if you are looking at shooting 9x16 content on your Alexa 35. All right, that's about it. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks.